So the, uh, the, the standard looking uh, forward disclaimers, uh, seeing as I only have 10 minutes, I'll let you that, we'll leave that up to you guys. So really briefly, what is uh, Lending Gold? Well, Lending Gold acquired the Fruit of Del Norte project, which was originally discovered in 2006 by Aurelian, acquired by Kinross in 2008. We acquired it in December 2014. And it has largely been known as one of the largest today undis uh, undeveloped gold deposits in the world. Our average grades are, you'll see in our reserves, are 9.2 grams per ton. Uh, in the resource itself, about 9.2, just under 10 million ounces. We've taken this from 2014 through full feasibility, and now we're well into construction and uh, essentially fully financed. It was interesting listening to the panel and that we've had to tap into the various methods all three panel members talked about. One of the biggest issues historically with, with Fruta del Norte was Ecuador. As typical with the Lending Group, we've timed it right. Ecuador is now seeing that mining is critical to the economic development of, this, of the country going forward. This is the current share structure. Uh, I'll explain in the next slide. Newcrest now is our largest shareholder at 27.1%. Lending family at 22%, and then the Orion at 11, and then the remainder. This is the real briefly how we finance this project in what we consider very difficult markets. We started with a $300 million package with Orion and Blackstone private equity on, with a stream and a gold prepay. They came in very early, which allowed us to actually start our pre construction activity. Formal construction didn't start until July 1st. Then we announced uh, in two stages, in January, a $350 million senior debt package, including uh, seven banks, originally five and two additional have come in, two Canadian banks, SOCGEN, ING. Uh, so we're, again, that package, we're just in the final stages of finalizing the documentation. And then shortly after that, about two weeks later, we announced uh, the equity private placement with Newcrest. Uh, as the largest investor at, at uh, 250 of the 400. The lending family came in for an additional 50, and Orion at 100 million. So essentially, in under a year now, we've been able to raise a billion dollars for, for financing this project in Ecuador. Real quickly, it's not only Fruta del Norte. As part of this package, we acquired originally an 85,000 hectare land package. We are drilling currently 12 kilometers to the south. There's a tremendous amount of economic growth within Fruta del Norte itself, but also this is a very large epithermal gold development district or exploration district, and we continue to work this. So there's a lot of potential upside for organic growth within Lundin Gold. This is our current reserves, and they represent about si just over 65% of our indicated resources. You can see just under 5 million ounces, which will provide for about a 15-year mine life at an average grade of 9.2 grams per ton. Our life of mine average is very consistent and will continually produce over 300,000 ounces of gold a year, but a very small mine at only 3,500 ton a day production rate. So where are we at today? This is a photo of our new 1,000 person construction camp. So we have capacity for 700, 1,700 people on site, currently at about 1,200 people, of which uh, well over half are from the local area. We've now got 1.1 kilometers of underground development completed. That is our critical path. All of our mobile equipment and process equipment has now been ordered. So well over 35% of our capital costs has now been committed. And we still are sitting on just over 85% of our contingency. So we're well into this and we're feeling very comfortable about being on time and on schedule. One thing that's different about this, you look at our detailed engineering and our construction, they're very close. Typically, your detailed engineering is almost complete before you start construction. We're doing this in what's called the self-perform method, which is significantly essentially you, we are doing the construction ourselves. This is allowing us to manage the project versus just managing contractors. I think this is a new way of construction in the future, and part of the issues with many projects in the past have been issues with EPCM. And I think we're going to see a new way, this as the method, the model going forward. This is the photo of the underground, so you can see in the small inset where we were as of a couple weeks ago, the end of April. The gray was a soft tunneling, which was very risky, very slow, a meter a day. Now we're getting over pretty close to six meters a day in five and a half by five meter drifts. So the guys are doing a very good job. 
and you can see the ultimate where we need to get to. So this is, again, our critical path and something we're staying very much on top of. This is a, it's a compact site. You can see the mine facilities. The piers for the sag and ball mill now are being poured this week and our twin portal locations here. Here's our projected production profile. So first gold in Q4 2019, ramping up in 2020 and then hitting stride in 2021. This will be revised starting Q4 2000 of this year. We are doing a full review of our mine plan, incorporating, we think we'll be able to reduce our mining costs and uh, also be able to decrease some of the risk on ramp up. So we'll be issuing this in Q4 but don't anticipate a lot of change in the overall production, just again, further risk reduction. In terms of permitting, and this was mentioned too, is a big issue. We got our environmental license for the whole project in October, 2016. Our power line, a 42K power line is constructed. We've received that in January of this year. And in Ecuador, construction materials, a quarry is different than your mine. Even though it's part of our mining permit, we had to get a new EIA for this. We're in the process that we've got the public participation process finished. They are just doing the final uh, finalization of it and we hope to have that within the next month or two. That is material that we'll need for construction of the tailings dam. In terms of our capex, and again, as I mentioned, we will be updating this as well as our schedule and everything. Our total capex is 684 million. Uh, that includes our pre-production, so to get us to first gold, 730, and then we have operating costs ramp up and some revenue in there to bring us to a net 684. And our all-in sustaining, this will put us in the lower quartile of operating costs at $609 all-in sustaining. This is not a big ore body, so our initial development really is the majority of the development that's needed. So we don't have additional ramps, development of that sort. And our mining methods are essentially diversified throughout. We have two mining methods, transverse long hole stoping and drift and fill for the very high grade, difficult ground conditions. All of our equipment's essentially bought at the start. So as a result, our, our sustaining capex for this operation is quite low. Again, as I mentioned, we are updating our full capex and opex, and we anticipate with some changes that we've seen in mining to be able to get our mining costs down a bit. So we anticipate that this will come down a bit. We all know today, although it wasn't mentioned, we talked about environmental permitting earlier, social license is critical. You can have the best deposit in the world today, but if you don't have your social license, as we all know in many places now in the world today, you wouldn't be able to mine it. We were very lucky that Aurelian and Kinross had really good community programs we were able to build off it. And it's one of the fundamental philosophies of the lending group of companies, in, whether in oil and gas or mining, is social license. So this is a very important part. We work with the Lundin Foundation. Our key focuses are on training, local employment, local procurement. And very happy as of the end of April, we're over 2,300 employees and 53% of them are from the local area, which is a total of about 5,000 people. So almost, a well, over a quarter of the people that live in the area are now working for us. So, this, but again, this is due to a lot of training. The other thing about Ecuador that we, our construction team has been very pleasantly surprised is productivity. Ecuador has quite a large oil industry, 500,000 barrels a day. They're trained in industrial processes. So the productivity actually has been quite a bit better than what we'd anticipated. Uh, it, thinking that this is the first large-scale mine being built in Ecuador, we anticipated lower, but it actually is quite a bit higher than we anticipated. And in terms of local procurement, we're now acquiring over $3 million locally through the efforts of the Lundin Foundation and our team to try to improve local suppliers. And I got it done with only one bell. So uh, if there's any a quick, I think I have time for one quick question if there are any. Okay, thank you. Fantastic.